Hi guys, I'm going to be reading chapter 17 from The Toothpaste Millionaire, and this one is called The Absolutely Honest Commercial. I know commercials are supposed to be boring, but I liked making the commercials for toothpaste more than any other part of the business. It was like making movies. In fact, that's what it was. Rufus knew a kid named Lee Lu, who had a movie camera. Lee Lu had made a complete movie about cockroaches that was so good it was shown in all the Cleveland schools. Rufus asked Lee Lu if he would help us make some commercials we could show on TV. The first one we made with Lee Lu showed Rufus talking about how uh, talking about the toothpaste in the way he did on the Joe Smiley show. Telling people toothpaste was just plain toothpaste, inexpensive to make, and expensive to buy. Inexpensive to buy. We'd start off with Rufus telling the story about his grandma Mayflower. Rufus had some snapshots of his grandmother that Lee Lu used between shots of Rufus talking about toothpaste. Though we were getting good at results with these commercials, Rufus got a letter one day from a girl in Boston. She asked how come the toothpaste commercials always showed a boy talking about the toothpaste. She said that was discrimination. Rufus said maybe she was right. He didn't want people to think toothpaste was just for boys or men. That he had Josie and Clem go through a week's orders to see if more of them were from males and females. They were. So then we made a commercial with me in it. I'd never been in a movie, and I thought I would be nervous in front of a camera, but Lee Lu said I didn't have to act, just be natural, and he'd do the rest. Trust me, he said. Remember how good those cockroaches came out? I don't know if I came out as natural as the cockroaches. My brother James and I was... My brother James said I was funny, which I didn't think I was. My father said not to worry if I was. That's, that wouldn't hurt sales. My mother was more tactful. She said I was surprisingly photogenic by which she meant I looked better in the movie than I do in real life. Which is probably true. My freckles hardly show on TV. In my commercial, I explained why toothpaste was mailed to customers in, pl in a plain cardboard box with no jazzy coloring, color printing on it. That was because it kept the cost low. Clem and Josie were in the other commercial. They showed how we cut the names and addresses of our customers off the postcards they sent us and pasted them to the right on the plain cardboard boxes. That way, we didn't have to pay anybody to address orders. But our best commercial, I thought, was one of Hector. He made a one-minute movie of Hector. We made a one-minute movie of Hector explaining how the toothpaste machine worked. In that commercial, Hector keeps ducking out of the way of the camera to be sure everybody gets a good view of the machine. That is a funny commercial. Lee Lu's movie of all of us telling about toothpaste were so good that the lot that a lot of kids at school wanted to come to work for the plant so they could be in one of the movies too. Every time we ran one of our commercials on a new station, we got a lot of new customers. Since our customers were ordering a year's supply of toothpaste at a time, we didn't have to advertise to the same people every week. We could run a commercial in the Denver, Colorado station once, and people who saw it would send in a year's order. We were doing all we were doing all right just showing our commercials on local TV stations around the country. You can imagine what happened when one of our one of the big networks ran our four best commercials one night for free. Morton McAllister on his evening news show had a report on what he called the absolutely honest commercial. He reported the people who hated commercials discovered one commercial they loved to watch because it was absolutely honest. Morton McAllister showed four of our commercials one with Rufus talking, one with me, one with Clem and Josie, and the one of Hector at the plant. After each commercial, Morton McAllister showed how people in the different parts of the country reacted. He showed how a lady in Miami Beach, a family in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, some college kids at a diner, and some migrant workers in California. After he showed examples of our commercials, Morton McAllister sat, at, sat in the sum up he does every night at the end of the show. And to sum it up, to a nation weary of wondrous claims for costly creations of sometimes dubious merit, the manufacturers of toothpaste have been dem demonstrating that honesty may be the best policy after all. The toothpaste commercials, if they can be called that, simply tell us what's in toothpaste and how much it costs. The advertising executes in their glittery headquarters along Madison Avenue do not understand why these commercials filmed by Cleveland school children should be selling more toothpaste than their very expensive, clever, and sophisticated productions. 
Perhaps it is that these toothpaste commercials shine like a good deed in a naughty world, refresh like a fresh breeze across polluted airwaves, and provoke us all to wonder whether the best things in life, if not absolutely free, might not be simpler and less expensive than they usually are. Isn't that beautiful? I thought it was so beautiful I memorized it to recite to the class we had to give, where we had to give part of a famous speech like the Gettysburg Address, or ask not what your country can do for you. Millions of people who might have missed our commercials on local stations saw them on Morton McAllister's news shows. Naturally, Rufus got thousands of new orders. Several big toothpaste companies were furious with Morton McAllister. They said it was absolutely unfair to give all that free advertising to one company. Morton McAllister replied that an absolutely honest commercial was news, not advertising. But three of the companies, Sparkle, Dazzle, and Bright, demanded equal time on his news program. The president of the network got nervous that Sparkle and Dazzle and Bright might not advertise on his network anymore. He told Morton McAllister that he would have to give them equal time. So Morton McAllister on his next news show explained that Sparkle and Dazzle and Bright felt it wasn't fair to show our absolutely honest commercials without showing theirs too. And to be absolutely fair, Morton McAllister said that he was going to show three examples, one from each of the companies, of commercials that worked absolutely honest. Well, when people saw the three of those in a row, it really turned them off and Rufus got millions more orders, which wasn't what Sparkle and Dazzle and Bright had in mind at all. And that is the end of chapter 17.